Okay, sonar sheet six. We're going to have a look at in this case this um, a stable design. What we need to do for a start is we need to establish what's happening at the output V out. You know what is happening right here on that circuit. So we need to make a, an initial judgment. Okay. So let's start by drawing a few sketch graphs here, and let's approximate at the very beginning. Let's say what's happening in this case as time moves on. We say the output is high. Let's call that V saturation. This uh, comparator has a supply rail that goes to plus V and a negative rail that goes to minus V. So my output at this node, okay, it can be either high saturation or it could be low saturation. In this case, we've said it's at zero volts, and I'm going to draw some sketches on here to see what's happening. So it's at zero. It's at um, plus Vsat. Let's just say, for example, that we're running on 10 volts, and this is minus 10 volts. Our output here would be 10 volts. Okay. We've now got 10 volts feeding back through RC. So in effect, we have a resistor and a capacitor. And we have just applied 10 volts to it. And we have GND. So we want to know what's happening here. We want to know VC. So we have to recall our charging equations. Charge capacitor VC is equal to supply voltage V. And then we go into 1 minus E minus T over CR. Okay. Our basic charging uh, of a capacitor. Okay. Now that's good. We now know what's happening at node B. We've got this expression, which is going to create that. So let's draw a little node, a little waveform here, according to time for what's happening at node um, B. This node. Basically, we are charging the capacitor, and it's following a one minus exponential curve. Okay. E curve will come down normally, 1 minus E goes up, okay? And we've got this uh, time constant CR formed by this CR and this C. Well, the other portion of this circuit, the output is feeding back to A to create a threshold point, okay? As you can see here, we've got R1 and R2. So VA is actually equal to V out, whatever V out happens to be, multiplied by R1 over R1 plus R2. Okay? Now, if you remember before, we've, we've called that a feedback fraction beta Vsat. Okay? Well, we talked up here about V saturation. So that, that point went all the way along here as this is in line. We now know that the feedback signal to this operational amplifier is set to some fraction of that supply voltage. Let's say that fraction occurs here. So on this graph here, which is the graph looking at this is this 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 particular graph at the top here is V out, okay? And this next graph here is what's happening at VB. At some point in VB, this line here we've now called beta Vsat. Okay, a fraction of the output signal. We cross the line. As soon as we cross the line, okay, our output will shift because this signal, okay, is no longer the greatest signal coming in at A. B is greater than A, so our output will toggle to the opposite state. It's going to go down and it, it's going to end up at now minus. Vsat, okay, which is the opposite rail, which in our little example it could be minus 10 volts. So we're down here. So we've charged the capacitor to this point, but what's happened now, our output has changed to minus 10, so we could have, I don't know, a number, we could have 2 volts on this capacitor, okay, up here. We've charged it to 2 volts. We've triggered, 
and our supply has suddenly changed to minus 10 volts but it's still got 2 volts on it so we've now got to charge the other way so if we do the maths in we're going to work out that we're going to end up with beta v sat again but this time where v sat is now minus 10 so we've got a negative threshold so now we're going to charge this capacitor and discharge it a little bit so we're going to charge it okay so it's 1 minus exponentially okay up to a point oh dear sorry that sort of vanished there so sort of discharging a little bit and then um, very difficult to draw an inverted exponential waveform okay so we end up at this point in time and at this point in time we hit our negative threshold and then we go back positive okay and the cycle will repeat okay so we're going to end up with some sort of discharge and then charge and on and on okay so as you move along initially you have that charge to get up to the beta v sat then we have to reduce the charge and charge to minus beta v sat and keep going so the waveform that we see into the capacitor looks a little bit like a sine wave okay but it's not really a sine wave it's mainly composed of the exponential charge on a capacitor and the exponential discharge of a capacitor and then charge to a new value because these are only sort of like plus v signals and plus v here so time running in that axis is the same so basically we're charging and discharging every time we trip where this voltage at node vb goes greater than va we toggle state so we go from the high state down to the low state at it really okay so there's our output if we was to draw the waveform at a the waveform at a would basically look like uh, the same as at the output but substantially uh, smaller in magnitude okay what's the frequency of oscillation for this well um you if you recall the, the periodicity for this it's got to be related to the charging times r and c but it's also got to be related to these this fraction of feedback signal and the maths for that was the period of oscillation is 2 cr okay the, the uh, feedback terms and then we have a log term into 1 plus 2r 1 over r2 okay so because of the way we're actually changing these signals and feeding them back that actually has an effect on our frequency and we always know as well frequency is simply 1 over the period of oscillation okay so there's our